Thank you. Good evening and thank you. Um, my role here on this program is I'm the director, deputy director in charge of construction for the <coughs> program for the Public Building Commission. That entails me to be involved with every project that we build. And this particular one is one also that is on my radar. I've been building schools uh, for the Chicago Public Schools and for the Public Building Commission for several years, so I have some background in this area. We're currently, if my understanding, we're out to bid, and we anticipate the bids to be coming sometime in the month of June, this, in January. At that time, we will review the bids with the general contract. January, January, January of this, this month. We're, we're, we're anticipating having some award or selection of the general contractor during the month of January. After we complete the administrative process in-house to make sure all the insurance bonds and all the uh, regulatory and processes are complete, and when I say regulatory, I mean the issuance of the actual building permit so that the contractor can legally build on this site, then we will start construction. We anticipate construction to start in March of this year. Uh, very soon, the staff of on-site staff of project managers, assistant project manager, and document control staff will be here along with the general contractor. And their goal and their mission and responsibilities are to ensure that, one, that the project is built in accordance <coughs> with the plans and specifications, and number two, that we are a good neighbor. And what I mean by that is that there will be some inco inconvenience and disruption to your normal day in life. And it's just normal. It's a construction site. You will have trucks. They will be delivering steel. They will be delivering materials. You will have contractors. At the height of the construction period, there could be over 200 men and women out here working on the site. Now, I'm very sensitive to that. So what we will do with the general contractor before we actually start the actual construction of the building itself is work out a site logistics plan and a truck traffic plan so that we can have minor disruptions. Um, this is one of those situations where the trucks like to get here at 6 o'clock in the morning. They have the trucks going, the diesel trucks are going, the noise is out there. Well, we've learned our lessons uh, in other communities and said, no, that will not happen. We will have to determine with the contractor and with the alderman's office where many of these trucks can stage early in the morning, because if you know guys in construction, it's 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. They like to get started. So you will have some disruption. We will do our best to minimize it. Street cleaning is a very high priority. It's a lot of mud, a lot of dirt. We want to make sure we keep the streets clean because you still live here. And so therefore, we want to try to be respectful of, respectful of your community. Um, and the project managers, once they are on board, and we've, we will bring them back, and the, the purpose there is that if you have problems, or you see something that doesn't make sense, please make sure that they are aware of it because we will help. And Dwayne also will be involved with that because we work very closely with him on the community relations because we just want to make sure you guys know that we understand. We live in the communities in the city ourselves. The working hours typically start about 6 or 7 in the morning. I think by ordinance it's usually around 7. And many of the contractors normally quit about 3. There will be times when they will want to work overtime. I believe Saturdays are typically when they will try to do some work or they'll work later in the summer hours when there's more light later in the day. But again, we will communicate that on a regular basis so you are aware of that. Um, we also will try to work with the contractors as part of the whole site logistics plan as to where these contractors are going to park because they drive. And so we'll work all of that out as the contractor is selected and we work all of that out. I don't have the answers to give you right now, but I will tell you that we will be sensitive to the neighborhood. Getting here early enough, I could see how can tight it may be for parking and it's, you know, right here in communities. And so we, we'll, we'll work through all of those issues. We've done this before and we've been successful. With the contractors. We'll, okay, we'll deal with the questions at the end. <coughs> and that's all I have to say at this point in time. And now we'll turn this over to uh, Terry Haymaker, who will talk about the planning process. Can we come process. to the podium now? I'm sorry? Can we come to the podium yet? No, we have one more speaker. Okay. 
Well, I'm Terry Haymaker. I'm the director of planning for the PBC. I have the best news at all for everybody because I'm the last speaker. So when I'm done, then you can answer, ask all your questions. And we're happy to take all of your questions. Um, I just wanted to run through um, quickly for everybody so people who maybe aren't so familiar with the details the alderman explained earlier about the schedule that we've gone through um, for this project, as the alderman mentioned, it has been going on for quite some time. In January of 2001, um, the public schools designated the site, and that's their official board action where they say this is the site we want to acquire for a school. The acquisition was completed then in 2004. In June of 2006, the mayor announced uh, modern schools across Chicago, which is an, um, a multi-school project um, in many neighborhoods across the city. It's over a billion dollars worth of new construction of schools specifically to relieve overcrowding or to replace um, um, outdated facilities. Um, and then the funding process for the project then went through the city council process by the end of 2006 so that all schools were, the funding was identified and secured um, and city council approved it by at, in December of 06. That, that then cleared the way for 07, in 2007, for the PBC to start working on um, design and um, making sure that the building would fit on the piece of property. Then, um, because it's a school and it's over two acres, it's a, an ordinance requires us to file a plan development, which is the zoning approval for the, for the property. So that was filed in July of 2008. Um, we then went to the plan commission hearing in October of 2008. Zoning committee the same month, and then the final step for the zoning approval was when the city council approved it at their November um, city council committee or uh, city council hearing. Then we followed that with the issuing for bid in December of 2008, as was mentioned before. Those bids are due back um, in the month of January, the last week of January, um, and then it is our schedule going forward then to get the building permit issued in March and start construction in March. The main part of the building, the building superstructure component, will be completed. It's a little over a year to complete the construction of the building, and we're targeting that for June of 2010, so that that leaves us time for July and August to get all the licensing in place, for schools to be able to come in, you know, the <coughs> teachers get their classroom set up, so that in September of 2010, the school opens, the, um, the students are welcomed in, um, and it's a great facility in the neighborhood. So that is our schedule what we've completed so far, and what our goal is going forward. And I'm happy to turn it back over to uh, Michael to um, MC the questions and answers. Uh, uh, is there a microphone back there? No. There's a microphone. At, yeah, there it is. Where, where? At the stand. At the stand? Okay. Um, first of all, are there any questions or comments? Yes, I can imagine, yes. Uh, as as, as uh, I've already said at the beginning, uh, we did, when we passed out the flyers and gave out information, we did it say that we'd give priority to people who live on Whipple or Sacramento um, or, or at the Parkside uh, Commons or what so if those people who live in that area like to go to the microphone first if they have any questions once they're done then the general audience can talk okay. And, and if you can just just one comment or question per person so everyone has a chance to talk. Okay. Um, I'm Coleman Bookbinder. I live at 6619 North Whip. Coleman Bookbinder. Is it, is it? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's real small. Name is Coleman Bookbinder. I'm at 6619 North Whipple. I'm right where the traffic's going to be coming and going in and out of. And my, I'm not against the school, by the way, but I am concerned about the amount of parking since it's on the edge of the district and it, and we're only we're three blocks basically from the nearest buses I think you're going to have a lot more teachers driving than you do at a normal school also there's only one block face for people to park along as opposed to most schools like Clinton which have three or four streets surrounding them so I would really like to see more parking on site and if there's not enough room out here you can probably buy a lot or two off of Wayland, which is empty, and backs on the property. So that's it. All right, thank you. I will, I'll just explain for people how the parking number was determined. Um, we can certainly um, 
take your request under consideration, but just so you understand, the zoning requires one parking space for every three full-time equivalent employees. And in elementary schools of 900 students, we have between 58 and 60. Which, so um, we have enough parking per the zoning code. We also have a little extra for um, visitors, you know, a teacher, teacher conference, maybe a parent wants to drop by and um, you know, meet with the principal or the teacher. So that's how the parking is determined by, by the, per the zoning code. Thank you. Any, are there any more questions from people that live? Oh. Uh, yeah, even I live a half a block from here. Um, I just want to make a comment. Uh, the comment is that we know, for example, with police, community policing, it's now known that the best way, the people who know most about the community is the community. And regretfully, up to this point, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, the community has not been involved in any fashion. No evidence were asked to the community. No indication was given to the community. The last meeting that was supposed to okay the commission was on Sukkot. Sukkot is a holiday we can't even travel. No input whatsoever. So I just find it very sad that we have building a school, and I'm not against school in any way, but the community may have had a lot of good ideas how to alleviate these issues on Whipple, and there are going to be issues with parking. We had possibilities of coming in off of Kedzie, all kinds of possibilities. The community was not involved. Thank you. Well, I mentioned, I mentioned the uh, meetings that were held years ago. Please. There was a meeting in, in 2004 and there was a meeting in 2007. There were... Listen, it's not my fault that you weren't here seven years ago, but don't talk about no community involvement because there was community involvement. And as far as the... How many of you were aware of the plan commission meeting? That wasn't on Sukkot. That was before that was before Rosh Hashanah. Where were you? I wasn't, and I know most of what's going on in this community. How would you know? It's midday downtown. It was uh, Rosh Hashanah. It was it was publicized in the local newspapers. I can't help it if you don't read the newspapers. That's I can't. How did you know the, about the meeting before the... the sent out a notice. That's how we got here tonight. We didn't hear it from you. You didn't Please. tell us anything. Michael Moses ha handed out flyers That's from his... Michael. Michael's my dear friend, but he didn't give me a flyer. He handed out flyers. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Let me just see. Well, well, Listen. Show of hands. How many people in this room are going to be sending their children to this school? Let's see. That's not the question. How many people? Oh, really? We don't wait, count? Wait. We don't count? You want, to, you want to see something about the notice? Here? We want a strong public school. That's the backbone of a strong city. I happen to Sir, be a sir, graduate. first of all, why don't you go up to the microphone and identify yourself? Absolutely, my pleasure. And give your address also. My name is Avram Brown, 604 North Francisco. In that Chicago. is uh, Mr. Br uh, Rabbi Brownstein. You can call me there. Rabbi Brownstein. I like why, Ernie Still. Uh, yeah. Rabbi, why don't, you, why don't you say how many people who, uh, of the thousand people who live east, uh, west of California are going to public schools, and uh, don't they deserve a school? Absolutely. So, why, so Absolutely. why do you say how many people in this room? Absolutely. Well, how about the people about... that go to public school? Don't they deserve a school? Don't you think we deserve the courtesy? Yes, she says they are. How many people in this room? The... How about the people who aren't in this room? The Don't they deserve a consideration? Why are they oh, and we have a relationship because with you they, they're aware years. of this. Rabbi Brownstein has raised the question. I'm not raising the question. He's raised the question. First of all, there was a... Rabbi, you've raised the question. Let me answer it. Number one, you're not directly involved. You're not on Whipple. Hold it. I'm answering Rabbi's question. I'm in. You can call me Rabbi Brownstein. <laughs> All right, Rabbi. Rebitson. I'll call you Rebitson Brownstein. No, I'm not 
not a Rebbitzin either, but I'll tell you something. I hear everybody up here very liberally throwing around the word community. Every single one up here liberally throwing it around. I have yet to hear how you are going to fix the congestion th of all the teachers. Just here in teacher conferences, you've got 1,800 people coming here that night. How are you going to park these people? Can I ask you a question? Sure. How many parent-teacher conferences are there during a year? I don't know. I, children How many are there during a year? School. How many are there during a year? Two? Two a year? Don't Do you they think? Have performances? Do they have school curricular you know, you know, activities? Do you they know, have football games? Where do, your do they kids, have sales? Where do your kids go to school? My children aren't into school anymore. Well, where did they go they to school? They Base Yaakov. Don't, aren't they enti weren't they entitled to have it at Base Yaakov? Entitled to have what at Base Yaakov? Entitled to have what at Base Yaakov? I mean, you look. Let's I'm fair. What's here. fair is you fair. We're going to service this community. This community that you are talking about, the majority of our community are not attending students. That is not true. N and the, and the demographics, the demographics you saw show, that, show it's not true. How many people in this room have children going this to public This room school? does not represent the community. This room... What are you going to do about the congestion? What are you going to do on Whipple when I can't pull out of this the This room represents a portion of the community. You don't represent the entire community. Then have a meeting where the whole community is invited. I tried. you know what? The whole community is worried about how, much, how many people are going to be taking over Chippewa. How many after people are going to take school. over Chippewa? After, I have not. Yeah, why do you do you think I represent the cars. Chicago Park District too? I don't represent the Chicago well, Park District. You should bring them in. They're part of the community. But I don't represent the Park District. Who says that? Who said that? Will you identify yourself? Would you? Would you why don't I represent? Now hold on. You raised the question. I ask you point blank. Why do you say I don't represent you? Yes, for 36 years I've represented you and represented you well. I'd like you to tell me why I don't represent you. I'd like any rabbi in this room to stand up and tell me I haven't represented you for 36 years. Yeah, I, I live years. on Ripple. I've, I've lived here for 30 years. And, I've, and I haven't represented you for 30 years. And been, I'm not you, representing you, you, you today. You feel position, but I don't feel you represented me or the community. If you just look at the Vaughn Avenue... What about what, Devon Avenue? I came to, to West What about Devon Park, Avenue? Devon Hold on. Avenue Go ahead. What about Devon Avenue? Street. It was a beautiful street with lots of high-quality stores and lots of good traffic. I've seen a steady deterioration over the years. What was the deterioration? T tell me what the, the deterioration stores. The quality of the street. The quality of stores. Looks rough. Do I? And, now, and, let and me the, ask you a question. We see no leadership to really imp to make any effort to revitalize Michael, Michael. Devon. A question, Excuse and me. I don't know if it's true. The finance of the school, was, was uh, TIF money used to finance the school? Yeah, it's all TIF money. So this money that you, you know, this is, how much of this money was, was put into any project to revitalize Devon as opposed, what percentage it of the is TIF coming, money went to this school? It's coming. This money that's, that's supposed to revitalize communities, and we see this, the, you know, it's well. Wait, wait a minute. That the Do you understand what TIF money is? May I is? finish speaking before you interrupt? Yes. I'm quiet when you speak. Oh, okay, please very be well. quiet when I speak. You ask, you ask me to speak here. Right? Yes, absolutely. So let me speak, please. We've seen a constant, steady deterioration of Devon. Other communities have projects to revitalize central streets. I have the impression one of the purposes of the TIF money, this is tax money that goes into a separate to revitalize blighted communities. And here, what percentage of that money is going into this school? What percentage of the money that could revitalize the community is going into this school? And how much is that going to help the people here? I, I see, I'm not opposed to a good school. A good school is very good for our community. But if what percentage of the TIF money is going into that? And what has done to revitalize Devon in the last... 15 years. All right. You asked a legitimate question, but first let's, let's understand what TIF money is. TIF money is 
the difference between the value of the property today and the value of the property tomorrow. It is the increase in the value of the property. $20 million of the money to, uh, is coming from the Vaughn Avenue TIF. Seven million or eight million is coming from the Tui Avenue TIF. In other words, the property values How? have the property values and both TIFs have have or will increase that amount of money, so that they can they can uh, they can use that increase in the values of those properties to build this school. Now. What does that say? The property values along the Vaughn and along Tui are increasing in value. Now you say they're deteriorating, but, but the tax rolls say they're increasing value. Now let me tell you about the Vaughn Avenue. If I told you, you're not gonna believe this, but I, if I told you that a 30-foot lot on the Vaughn Avenue sells for more money than a 30-foot lot on Michigan Avenue in the in the in the in the in the million dollar mile it sells for more the address was the old hardware store on near rockwell sold for one million and a quarter a 30 by 125 foot lot on von avenue near rockwell sold for one million and a quarter a 30 foot lot on michigan avenue on the magnificent mile doesn't get doesn't sell for a million and a quarter Yet on Devon Avenue, it's worth a million and a quarter. That'll give you an idea of the value of property along Devon Avenue. Now, you tell me it's deteriorating, but property values along Devon Avenue have increased. Now, there, uh, until we hit this economic s slowdown, Devon Avenue was, was uh, in major, in major re uh, revisions. Michael is on a committee that is planning and been working for, for a number of years on the absolute redevelopment of Devon Avenue. You may not be aware of it, but there is a committee working for the redevelopment of the total Devon Avenue. I can't help it if you're not aware of these plans, but these plans are in the works. <laughs> Neil Stein is on that committee. Uh, I, I don't know who else is on that committee. Uh, but, you walk down Devon at night, walk down at 9 o'clock at night and just take a look at it? You've, no. you've done that no. recently? Wait, wait, you didn't answer my question. Wait, wait, what percentage wait, wait, of the TIF money? What percentage of the TIF money that went to the school? Listen, the meeting was about the school. What percentage of the TIF money went to the school? What percentage of what? The TIF All the, from the, the entire school. The entire school is being built on no, TIF money. No, what percentage of the TIF money is going to the well, school? I, I really don't know, but here's the, a question. That, Question well, okay, I ask. We'll get, I know who you are, and you know who I am. I'll call you tomorrow and tell you. But let other people ask questions about well, the I, school. It's he, not fair for one person to stand in front of the He specifically microphone. called me over. I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. But please. statements that are untrue. Please. 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 Well, let somebody else Let somebody else My name is Connie Friedman, and I live half a block down. And I think um, what people are trying to say is that, by and large, the people in this room aren't about the disruptions to our life and whether we're going to the school or not is something that's just behind the scenes in that disruption. My question basically is, is everything set in stone, no pun intended? Are there no adaptations that can be made in, for example, the number of parking spots, even though we're going according to code? Let's be serious. 30 parking spots is ridiculous, and it will affect my life half a block away. I promise it will. Even more than the report cards and so forth. Is that set in stone? Is the action point only being Whipple? Is that set in stone? Or is there an, a, a chance, based on the number of people who are here and whose lives will be disrupted and whose kids are not going to this school, is there a chance for there to be an adaptation? That's my question. In terms of the yeah, next question. Yeah. In terms of the um, parking spaces, it's something we can take back and explore. I'd like to look in further detail at what other schools have and how they function because we haven't done that sort of research yet. So we're going to go back and take a look at um, the number of parking spaces. Areas, yeah. Right in residential areas. Right. 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 Right.
Please, let, let, let her answer the question, and then another question could be asked. According, according to CPS, um, 30 is an average number of spaces for schools. Some schools have more, some schools have less. And, I mean, people adapt or, you know, people take the bus, people carpool. I mean, that's how people, uh, you know, function. We can go back and look at it. I can't say it's going to change, but we can go back and look at it. That, the access, there aren't any other streets, so I don't. No, how you would have a driveway to kids. Come on. We've been working on that for yeah, I've been working on that for six for three years anyway. But as late as this morning, we were, we were trying to work out another access point. We keep running into roadblocks, and I tell you what the roadblocks are, so you'll understand. Uh, we we try to work out a, as late as this evening. I try to work out a road one of that, one of, uh, access to Kedzie, uh, trying to come from the parking lot onto the onto the street, uh, onto the new street in the new subdivision. The problem is that street is a private street, and you got to get permission. The plan development specifically calls for that to be a private street, which means that every single property owner would have to sign off on it. They're not going to sign off on it. There aren't any property owners at the moment. <laughs> I, I... The development... Is stood on itself. You, you cannot. Of course, they had my approval for the development. I wanted to approve the land, which I try to. I try also to make a trade of land with them to put the school on Kedzie. And only problem I had is they only had two acres. I tried to trade. Trade. And Michael was part of that at that meeting. We tried to trade the land on Kedzie for the land over here, but but they're. Will you let me answer, please? Their, their land was insufficient to place the school on Kedzie. Otherwise, we would have traded the land on Kedzie for the land on Whipple. So you're aware that there are problems with congestion and traffic. You know that there's We've problems. We've looked for land. We looked for land for five years. It took us five years to get this piece well, of land. It's too bad for us who live on the street and can't get our kids to school. In the morning. It's too bad for the, pe for the kids that were... Meeting in the stage of Clinton, it was too bad for the kids that were meeting in the hallways of Boone. There are, if you have no concept of the overcrowding that was going on in those two schools. Now, you, one of the things you raised the question and has been raised before is most of the people in this room don't have kids that go to the public schools. And yet, you want to talk about those kids that are living under un imp impossible conditions, Everybody that are learning they're under. They're having impossible conditions in the schools they're in. It's tough. You make do. Putting a school like this, of this magnitude, and this many students. What's, it, what's magnitude? It's no, 700 no, to 900 no, students. You're telling me it's going to be a magnitude of 900 students. Come on. How are you going to get these kids to school on a cold day? It doesn't make sense. It's impossible and unacceptable. It is unacceptable. In other words, not in my backyard. Put it in somebody else's backyard. No, on something that makes sense for everybody. On something that makes sense for everybody. On a place where there's multiple accesses, not one tiny, one-way side street. How does that make any sense? Okay, we have... We do have someone, uh, Jennifer, who did a traffic study on, on this property for the school, and she's going to say a few words to talk about this issue. 